Well, a very good evening, folks, and welcome to tonight's organ recital, uh, given live from the BIS Music Room, in honour, in memory, and in celebration, I think more uh, importantly, to Dr. Francis Jackson, who died on Monday. So all the music uh, tonight is uh, personally, for me, related or associated to Francis Jackson. I went to an organ recital uh, given by Francis in York, Minster, uh, whilst I was organ scholar there um, from 2006 until 2008. And in 2007, right in the middle of my tenure there, he gave an organ recital in which he played the B minor. And it was, I think, uh, the last time I heard him play live um, in real life. So the last time I heard Francis play, he played this and it was, um, a really romantic uh, performance. He used a lot of reeds and uh, made it very exciting. Bearing in mind he was 89 when he played it, that recital, he played extremely well. So I realised uh, literally on the first line of this piece that I haven't actually got the pedal cam on. Now um, there's quite a lot of notes to get through tonight, quite a lot of pedal notes to get through. So I think, if you will bear with me, I think we ought to actually put that on. What I can do is and this is proving it's live tonight, I can just zoom over here and actually start pressing some buttons and um, get it on. So what I will try to do is talk whilst um, doing technical stuff. <laughs> if it goes wrong, you'll have to excuse me. So, the pedal cam luckily is already in place. It's a GoPro and it shouldn't be that difficult to um, get online, if I'm honest. Um, if I, I'm in OBS, by the way, if anyone's interested in streaming, I'm using OBS. So um, actually it's all a bit sort of, you know, manual labor sort of stuff. There we go, pedal cam is on. You'll have to excuse, I normally put a little white border around the pedal cam. That's a, little, that's a manual thing to do as well. That's not, it's not built in, it's a manual thing. So I, I have to excuse the lack of white border. But rest assured, pedal cam is now in place. So I've actually got a few little, um, a few little clips of um, Francis playing. And the next piece that we're going to have is one of, I think, one of Francis's most famous um, uh, recordings. It's of the Norman Cocker tuba tune, um, obviously played on that famous tuba Moralibus at York. There aren't many tubas better than that. And I think it would be rather fun to actually um, have a listen to some, a couple of excerpts of him playing that wonderful tuba, and then we can compare his tuba and my tuba. So have a listen to this. It's a very sort of parpy sort of sound, isn't it? And of course, to later on in the piece, when everything goes down onto the tuba, it sounds like this. So it's it's almost a bit, almost quite comical, really. It's that it was that loud, and it's actually it has. I was talking to Andy Scott earlier today, and it has actually been the pressure has been increased since the last rebuild. I think it's on 25 um, um, inches of wind pressure right now, uh, as opposed to I think it was on about 20 before. So it's even more significant in that building. Let's have a listen to this tuba um, on this wonderful organ in Doodlelange in the uh, Norman Cocker tuba tune, which incidentally was written in 1922 uh, whilst um, Norman was at organist at Manchester Cathedral. And the recording you just heard was from 1964. I think it might have been one of the first recordings of the piece. Actually, let me know in the, let me know in the chat if, there, if, there were, if you know of any recordings that predate the 1964 recording uh, by Francis Jackson. Oh. 
Mm. <clears throat> Apologies if the uh, microphone was a bit wonky there. Um, hopefully you heard what I was saying and it wasn't all in vain.
Let's have a listen once more to Francis's own trum uh, tuba. I don't know, I think Francis, I mean, it's certainly in here that the tuba is marvellously loud. Marvellously loud? Um, but I think on the recording, I guess you guys might actually be hearing a slightly more refined, uh, quiet, more blended tuba than I am in here. <laughs> so let's go on to um, Francis's own piece now. This is um, an impromptu uh, written um, in 1944, uh, whilst um, Francis was actually serving in the British Army in Italy at the time. He wrote this impromptu for Edward Bairstow's 70th birthday um, whilst on the seashore at San Vito. So, can't have been all bad in the army. <laughs> um, this is a wonderful piece. I think this is one of the first pieces he wrote. Actually, it is Opus number five, so it, it is one of the first pieces he wrote. I don't know Opus one, two, three, or four, um, but this is the earliest piece of Francis that I know. And actually, I know I'm using four score here, but you might just see there Francis's own little um, signature. <laughs> so, let's have a go, shall we, at um, Francis Jackson's Impromptu.
think that's a very fine piece indeed. Um, and it's just, it's very short, but actually very compact. But in that very short time, a lot happens. Uh, some very exciting tuba fanfares, lots of harmonic interest, lots of regression, lots of notes, uh, lots of quite awkward fingering to get um, the hands around, uh, pedal trills, all that sort of stuff. I think, I think it's a terrific piece. Um, and I really, I, I only learned that last year and it's, I really um, enjoy having it in the repertoire. Um, so that's the first piece of Francis Jackson tonight. We're actually going to go on to another piece which he recorded, uh, Enrico Bossi's um, Scherzo in G minor. This is the first time um, listening to his recording of this was the first time I ever heard this piece on, um, well, actually I, I had it on a CD, but it was released on LP in 1967. Um, the second recording I heard of this and got to know was the great recording by the um, Professor Ian Tracy on uh, the organ of Liverpool made in the 80s, um, both of which are very fine recordings. But um, there's another little clip I've got for you, um, which I'm just going to play it because I'm going to use his idea um, of using um, the tuba at a very specific place. Um, have a listen to this, you'll know what I mean. Those people who know it will know where this, this, this is, but if you don't know the piece, listen out for this, in this, for this excerpt, um, and then listen to me play it later on. I just love how the tuba morale was at York just obliterated everything. You could tell that that, that he was uh, accompanying it with pretty much full organ, because you could hear the 32 foot sack uh, rumbling away and the the, the, twi um, the twinkling of the mixtures and all of that. Um, so let's see if this tuba cuts through in the same sort of way. So this is the Scherzo in G minor by Enrico um, Marco Enrico Bossi.
An exposed piece if there was ever one. <laughs> um, I've known that piece since I was, um, oh gosh, for as long as I can remember, I think it was one of the first pieces that I that I remember knowing or remember hearing and thinking one day I want to play that and maybe one day we'll play it properly. So how did the tuba fare? It's a good, it's a good tuba on this organ, actually. Very, very good tuba. So it's one of my favourite tubas on all of the Hauptwerk range. Uh, Alessandri doesn't have anything on this one. This one sounds very raw and uh, authentic, I think. Um, along with the the um, Chamard reeds as well. You can couple them down. Uh, the 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 eight foot trompet uh, Chamard down to the tuba Moralibus, and they sound fantastic together. The, the nasally sort of narrow sound of the, the chamard really brings a, a brightness to the warm, fat tuba sound. Anyway, in the next piece, you're not going to hear any, um, any tuba at all. Although ironically, this piece was written for trumpet by Floor Painters. It was originally a trumpet piece. Um, so you, you may have heard this um, in various grade, is it four or five or grade six trumpet exams? You may have accompanied it. But actually, uh, Floor Peters himself arranged um, the piece for organ. And I'm playing it because Francis Jackson uh, made a wonderful recording. Um, and, and on the third page, he really, he, he introduces a really warm, rich, stringy sound, which I'm going to try to replicate on this organ. Um, so what general am I on? I'm on number uh, 90, I think, 91. Let me just double check these. Double, uh, then number two for the strings, three for the clarinet and the 16, and then four there. Cool. So, Floor Peters, um, a beautiful um, aria.
I'm just changing my registration at the last minute. This is always a bad idea. Always a bad idea. Why am I doing this? She should, she should stop me. Stop, what are you doing? What are you doing? I just thought, actually, I, I could do with a bit, a bit more expression. I haven't got much expression in the general that I had set just then. So I'm gonna just, hopefully, <laughs> if I've done something completely silly, then you can just say, I told you so.
And now on to what many people regard as Francis Jackson's um, masterpiece. A composer will often be remembered um, for, you know, one particular piece which stands out, unless you're a Beethoven, um, a Bach, you know, a Brahms, where you have many, many pieces. But there are some composers, I'm not saying this will happen to Francis at all, but there are some pe uh, people who say that this Toccata, Chorale and Fugue is Francis Jackson's masterpiece. There are some who say uh, it's what it is the greatest piece of English organ music written uh, last century, in the twentieth twentieth uh, century, and uh, it, uh, it's easy to see why. It's it's just a really really clever piece. Um, it's, it, there's a wonderful toccata, uh, an introduction, which then goes into a toccata, which, with, with a, 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 then an interlude uh, into a beautiful chorale and into a very clever uh, and exciting fugue where there is, um, uh, you know, stretto all over the place. And it's very hard to do that well, along with augmentation and inversion and all that. It's one of the first pieces uh, in the, probably probably the first piece um, um, of English organ music to, to be written in a very atonal style. Uh, so that there are certainly parts of the fugue where it, it feels atonal, not in the sense of, you know, random um, notes being hit on the keyboard, but you don't quite know where the harmony is, you know, where, where's it going? All of, all of the chords together make sense, but they shift really quickly and you suddenly lose sense of um, uh, grounding and you, you feel you don't know where you are in, uh, harmonically. The fugue is very good at that. Um, and it's, a, it's a really terrific piece. So basically this piece is, um, is built on a few themes. You know, um, the first theme, which you'll hear very early on, on the first page, is a bit like this. You'll hear a lot of that. You'll hear this sort of idea, um, which, which isn't played in the pedal. In the pedal. Um, and the, the chorale, then, you hear this wonderful uh, tune um, in the chorale, this sort of descending idea of a, a, a dotted semi uh, quaver. That sort of thing. Um, so the whole piece is based around those sort of motifs and rhythms. You'll actually hear Francis Jackson playing a page of this. I'm going to have a duet with Francis himself. He, the same organ recital um, where he plays the uh, J.S. Bach uh, Frederick and Fugue in B minor 544, he played, he, <laughs> an 89 year old then played this. Um, and this, that was actually when I first heard this piece. And a lot of my registrations uh, today um, are based on his own performance in 2007 on the York organ. It was written though in 1957, so Francis had been at York for I think 11 years. Did he go in 1944, I think, to York? Um, and um, yeah, it's just terrific. So without any further waffle or further ado, let's have a listen to Francis Jackson, his Toccata, Chorale and Fugue. Again, Listen out for all of those themes. Let's see how clever he, he weaves them into the music.
um, I, I, you know, um, there are some pieces which you just think, um, <clears throat> when you get to the end, you think, gosh, that's a relief. Um, I think that's one of them. It just, you have to really think about, you know, it, you have to put that into muscle memory because it just, it's, the harmony is just so extraordinary. Um, I, I absolutely love that piece. I think it's what, it is one of my favorite pieces, but blimey, you have to just be really focused and on it. Um, and I think I, I've never played that piece yet without making a few little slips. Um, but it's, it's really worth the effort. I think that's on the FRCO syllabus at the minute, the, the chorale and the fugue. So those of you who are um, considering doing your FRCO, this, it, this is one of those pieces which you, if you, when you learn it, it, it stays with you. It really stays in the sort of muscle memory and it's, it's worth having in your um, career. Now, we ought to just have, so that's actually the final sort of main piece, if you like. We now go into the sort of the fun section. Uh, regular people who listen to BIS will know we'd like to do an encore or two here. Um, so we will have an encore or two. We'll have first, though, Francis Jackson wrote a very well-known hymn tune. And it's called East Acklam. And it's simply called East Acklam because that is where he lived. When he retired from York, bought a house in East Acklam in Yorkshire. And it was a very nice place. And East Acklam now has a hymn tune named after it. Lucky them. We will just have actually three verses of this and then we will go into a little fanfare after, after this. So if you ever now sing that or play that and you see the name <clears throat> Francis Jackson as the composer, you will now know who Francis Jackson is. He's a man who's inspired a lot of people, um, myself included. 
Um, and I think that um, life really is worth a celebration. It's worth um, us saying thank you um, to, this, to this chap. Thank you to Francis Jackson for um, everything that you've done for music, um, church music around the world. You know, me in G, Jackson in G, um, was something that I sang a lot as a, as a chorister. His music, his recordings, I, I've known my entire life. So um, this is not a, I don't think this is a, a mournful occasion. I think this is a happy occasion. I think um, Francis Jackson living to 104 years old is something incredible. That's not a sad thing, that's a very good thing. He was uh, living right up until the very end, composing and playing and living life to the very end. And I have it on good authority that Francis Jackson was, a, um, was very pleased and um, uh, overjoyed with the, with the recent um, renovation work at York Minster. So he actually, um, before passing on, it's almost like it was meant to be. You know, he saw the new organ and he played the new organ before um, um, uh, he saw it finished, you know. Uh, so I think that's a really wonderful thing. Um, so he, was, he would feel very comfortable sat here at this uh, console, which is obviously replicated on the uh, console of York. Um, so I hope that he's looking down or looking through this picture um, at us and, um, and spurring us on. So I think Francis is, um, his life deserves a fanfare. So he wrote this Archbishop's fanfare in 1961 for the most reverend Frederick Coggan, who uh, was at the time being enthroned as Archbishop of York Minster before then going on to be Archbishop of Canterbury. So he wrote this for him, but actually I'm going to play it for Francis. This is a fanfare for Francis. And because I played a wrong note, I'm going to play it again, because he would be cross. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Well, I'm going to draw that a close um, today. I'm going to draw this recital to a close um, with that wonderful um, short fanfare. 
Um, you can just imagine, can't you, what that would sound like on the actual tuba Muralibus at York. Rather terrific, I would um, imagine. I never played it at York, I never heard it played live. Um, but there is a recording of it, of course, so go and check it out. Tomorrow we will have virtual church at usual time. Actually, no, not at usual time at all. We're going to just sample uh, trial uh, do it, uh, going live at 8 o'clock, so two hours later than normal. We're going to just try that to see if we can just to, uh, make a balance of uh, UK and US listeners. And also it gives me a chance to uh, feed Hugo and um, help put him to bed, basically. Um, whilst I'm playing, Caroline can then um, calm him down. Um, having just eaten. So let's just try eight o'clock, uh, two hours later, feedback required as usual. Sorry about the pedal camera at the beginning of the recital. Um, you know how much, I know how much you like um, seeing my feet. Um, very sensible music notes, uh, footnotes today on, on the old feet. Um, try to be sensible for Francis. <laughs> and, um, and thank you very much for joining me. Actually, I don't quite know who's in. I can see 217 people watching now. Um, you can give me a plus one if you like right now. Um, maybe you have already in the, in the recital, I don't know. Uh, but I think a lot of you will have actually already gone. Um, already, because I'm starting to sign off. So I can see some plus ones coming through already. That's very good of you. Um, and um, if you're, by the way, those people who are green, as it were, are channel members. And channel members get a, um, I'm sure they will, if I ask them nicely, They'll put um, some emojis, you've probably seen them already, but they get special emojis. Uh, and it's, it has their name and a one. Now the one is basically a level, you know? So um, when, when um, you, uh, as a channel member, go beyond one month, you then get to two. And then if you then go to beyond four months, I think you go to three, and then basically go all the way up to six um, if you've been a channel member for two years. Gosh, that's very supportive. If you can support me for two years, that'll be insane. Um, so I've designed all of those, all of the emojis I've designed, and we're going to introduce some more. So the only reason really you could become a channel member, two reasons really, support me, because um, everything I do here is expensive. Your money gets reinvested back into the channel so I can give you better stuff. Um, I hope that's evidence, by the way. And, and the second reason is you get really cool emojis to use in the chat. And make people jealous. <laughs> so if you come, it's five ninety nine a month. Uh, it's basically that that's the price of a London coffee. Um, so forego one of your um, you know frappuccinos or whatever you have, you know, or a cheap bottle of wine, five ninety nine, um, and just give it to Beauty and Sound instead. It really helps. <laughs> Virtual church tomorrow eight o'clock, and I really look forward to seeing you then for for our usual informalities. And I've got quite a few updates actually with um, uh, the way beauty and sound is going to progress in the future. Nothing, nothing major, nothing major at all. Um, but I want to just fill you in on some uh, on some really cool details. So until tomorrow, um, I will say cheerio. Goodbye, everyone. Take care and stay safe. Goodbye. <laughs>